And I'm very excited to bring my uh, next guest out this evening. He's been on the show a few times, and every time he is, I just so much enjoy his company. He's huge in Hollywood right now, and for all the right reasons, it is the phenomenal Luke Evans, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Great to have you back on the show, Luke. Thank you for coming in. Uh, I read a quote from you recently, because I've seen you in a, a number of movies uh, and some TV quite a lot over the years. Um, you've become a fixture, you know. I, I know, and I know that it's going to be a quality production when I see you in, because I think you're tremendous on screen. Thank you. But obviously you've been doing it for long enough now to have changed somewhat. Yes. Well, I, I think this is the worst part of the business when you're on screen or on, in theatre. It's fine, because you don't actually get to see yourself. But yeah. When you're on screen, which is now about 10 years of I've been doing film, you see yourself age every single film. <laughs> you see another line and another wrinkle, and you're like, oh, bloody hell. So, yeah, it's like, a the, weird thing. This is something you don't enjoy seeing, that you, you are conscious of the ageing process. Very. <laughs> especially on a big screen as well. Well, it's, it's, yes, it's terrifying, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no one wants to. I mean, it's hard enough looking at the mirror reflection, never mind a 40-foot version of yourself. Well, we thought we'd have a look. Oh, nice, thanks. So we've put a sequence <laughs> of images together. Great. Uh, just that, but, but I think you'll be pleased. Oh, you're going to make me feel good. You're going to feel good about this. This is the magnificent Luke Evans, ageing only a tiny bit over the years. Yeah. Hey! That's it. Don't hey. knock him. Don't knock him. Don't really knock him. It. Did you tell me you're, you were 57? I am when 57 next week. You know my mum was 58 last week? Well, I know, because we used to <laughs> hang out together. I spent one summer in the valleys, and I don't know what happened, but... <laughs> Well, I mean, she such told me. Such good hair. <laughs> such good hair. Yeah. OK, uh, you have a new film out right now, and I was excited. Uh, w I was interviewing a while, and you told me yeah. this was going to be your upcoming project. Girl on the Train, I think, when I was here. You were talking you about Girl on the Train, and then you mentioned this, and I was one of the few people who knew about this character you were about to play, of That's course. right. Yeah, you okay. knew much more than anyone else I know Which about is, this is character. sort of tragic, but maybe we should tell people what the film's about. It's called Professor Marston and the Wonder Women. Okay. Yes, and it's about the... It's a true story about the man... Well, he's actually accomplished quite a few things in his life, but he uh, cr invented with his wife... He was a professor of psychology at Harvard University in the 20s and 30s, invented the early lie detector test with his wife, didn't patent it. Somebody else then patented it and made a fortune. They then had a... He had a research assistant who him and his wife ended up having a polyamorous relationship So with. they both fell in love with her and she was in love with both of them? As far as we know. Yeah. I mean, they were quite a private... Uh, they had a very private relationship. They, he had uh, children with both of them. Lost his job. They lost all their, their, their jobs. They had to move away. And then he went on and wrote Wonder Woman, which he basically was inspired by the two women in his life and they represent the Wonder Woman that we now know and love. I mean, the film itself, uh, it, it's a fascinating study of, like, psychology in that period and, and society in that period, but obviously there's a, there is sex on screen. And, uh, not it's peculiar, of, but it's a kind of, of unusual kind of sex on screen. Yeah, it's a little bit of bondage, a bit of tying up. So and, do uh, you... Now, do you just go in and just do that, like, a, a regular acting job, or do you research that at all in advance? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I suspect no the ladder... how I answer this question, <laughs> it's going to backfire. I didn't know how to do the tying up thing. None of us did. Um, so the, the director brought in these two ladies who were professional, dominant, a dominant and a submissive... Some, they had these very unusual titles, and it's a whole, like, part of society that, you know, yeah. I didn't... a community that I didn't know about. So we spent a few days with these, these two women who uh, taught us how to... Uh, <laughs> they, they enjoyed tying me up more than... The, it was all about the women tying me up more than I got to tie them up. Mm. And uh, so... Uh... <laughs> I get the feeling, while you're talking, there were memories going on which you're not sharing. <laughs> well, uh, I noticed you were kind of like you no, were talking... No, well, it's just funny. It was just a very weird thing to do on, on, on camera. But it must be quite... Uh, sex scenes, anyway, must be a bit peculiar to film. They're I mean, you, awkward. They're that awkward. film, you were in Hysteria. You had to do a, a sex scene there, didn't you? Oh, yeah, I had to... <laughs> I had to have a three-minute orgasm with, <laughs> with Rupert Everett and Hugh Dancy between my legs and the feather duster. <laughs> it was the invention of the vibrator, basically, called hysteria. It wasn't just some random... Uh... So you had to, you had to <laughs> pretend you were using a very early model of the uh, vibrator? They were using on it me, uh, me for the first time. Wow. So it's a comedy scene. Oh, there I am. <laughs> just in the actual <laughs> vibrator. I mean, that's, that's an industrial-strength vibrator <laughs> right there, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I 
looks like it's petrol powered. <laughs> <laughs> They, they often play music. Did they play any music when you were doing yours? No, it was the cameraman's birthday, and they said, oh, we've got the tape, <laughs> but this time, can you start moaning and saying his name? So I started going, oh, Alfred. <laughs> <laughs> oh, happy birthday, and doing all... Oh, I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then they, they turned the camera on him, and he was very red. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, so do you prefer performing or like singing anything? Because I know you know you obviously love theatre. You love musical theatre. Yeah, I mean, I I love singing. That's the the thing I love the yeah. most is singing. And musical theatre was the way I was able to do it for a living. Yeah. And I, I, as you can tell a story. You do the full story every night. You have a live audience, which there's nothing like having a live yeah. audience. So, you know to, that sense of electricity in the room, which you don't have in film. Yeah. You know, you really don't. It's a very different concept. But that's obviously what you guys have in common because it's something you experience and you do so well as well. Now, so I wondered if you were uh, to be offered a role together, <laughs> you know, you've played... Who did, earlier on you said you named one of your dogs after Dolly Parton? Yeah, oh. that Dolly Parton's my dream role. So if you were offered a Dolly Parton Rovies. film or musical, you'd want to be in there? <laughs> yeah, I'd love So it. what role could we find for you? Kenny Rogers. So if I was to ask you now whether we could play here a bit of Dolly and Kenny, would you be up for it? <laughs> oh, God. Okay, so yeah, let's do. Okay, I've got some microphones ready. You pass that down to Sheridan. Oh, no, I, oh, right. Luke, you get Kenny's one. Okay, so I don't think Kenny and Dolly had like a Scottish man in the middle. No. Okay, Farquhar, you come over here. Okay. Okay, okay guys, do you want to sit or stand for this? Do you want to stand or you want to sit? Stand up. Let's stand up. Here we go. For the first, but hopefully not the last time, we're going to see Luke Evans as Kenny Rogers and Sheridan Smith as Dolly Parton. Guys, take it away. Islands in the stream. 